So managing them, always base the diet on forage, um, so either pasture or hay, which is same rule for every horse. The trick with these guys though is feeding forages with less than 12% non-structural carbohydrate. And for you in Victoria, this is almost impossible because so many of your hays are ryegrass or cereal hay, and ryegrass and cereal hay have got a, a um, tendency to accumulate a lot of these non-structural carbohydrates. I've tested a, an oat pasture um, that was about 33% non-structural carbohydrate, just the leaves. There's no grain, so it had about um, the same amount of um, starch and sugars as what oat grain had. Um, so it's really, really, really difficult for you in Victoria to find suitable forages for laminitic horses because you don't grow them down here. When I do these presentations up in Queensland, I'm like, oh, you guys are set. You've got bluegrass, you've got Rhodes grass, you've got a whole heap of Queensland native grasses that you can feed and they, they um, find it quite easy to find hay. So what you often um, end up having to do is soaking the hay. So if you can't find suitable hay, you have to soak the hay, which is a royal pain. Um, and I have said to my horses that if they ever get laminitis to the point where they need soaked hay, then they're probably not going to survive because I don't have time for soak hay for horses. Because um, it is, it's really, really time consuming. And I take my hat off to people who are committed enough to their horses to do this because there is a lot of people who do soak hay. Do you think that really works? Yeah, it does. Yeah, we've tested. She just said, do you think it really works? So there's been quite a few people now who have... Um, tested, like properly tested the non-structural carbohydrate content of hay and then they've soaked it for different periods of time and tested it and it does reduce it. Um, but it doesn't, if you took a 20% non-structural carbohydrate hay and soaked it, it's probably not going to get it down to less than 12. So you might want to take a 15% one and soak it and you'll get it down to less than 12. Um, but it, it, it's hard and I don't have a simple solution for you, sorry. How long do you have to soak Sorry? How long do you have to soak in warm water, probably 30 minutes, in cold water, an hour. Um, but then you want to hang it up and let all the water drain out of it and rinse it if you can. Um, yeah. And then I said, just loosen what hay. about loosen hay? So um, I'll get, we can talk about suitable oh. forages, but don't allow horses with active laminitis to graze because the problem with pasture is the non structured carbohydrate level does this during a day. So my pastures in summer, if I tested them very, very early in the morning, um, like before the sun came up, they were about 7% non-structural carbohydrate. When I tested them late in the evening so that I had a full day of um, making sugar because they make it when they photosynthesize under the, in sunlight, um, they were up at 20% non-structural carbohydrate. So, um, but if they, if for whatever reason they don't burn up those carbohydrates overnight, they can still be very high first thing in the morning. So it's too much of a Russian roulette game with a horse that's got active laminitis to actually let it out onto pasture um, and I'd probably recommend you don't graze it. Um, if grazing is to be provided, so if you've got a horse that's had laminitis and, it, and it's quite a sensitive one, only graze in the very early hours of the morning um, and have them off the pasture by two hours after sunrise in high risk periods. So your high risk periods are when a, a pretty much High risk periods are pretty much every time of the year. <laughs> um, we see laminitis all year round, but, but classically your high risk periods down here are um, autumn and spring, but winter can also be a very high risk period too. So what happens during the day when the, the plant photosynthesizes is they, they create a lot of sugar, but then if you get a very cold night, they actually sit quite dormant overnight. They don't burn up many of those sugars and then you come the next day and they photosynthesize again and they build the sugar up again and then they sit a little bit dormant overnight if it's cold and frosty and then they photosynthesize again so it just the sugar levels keep gradually creeping up and up and up and you can get them when I like with the oat pasture that I saw and we test um, temperate grasses as well that have been up over 30 percent non-structural carbohydrate so they can be a disaster for these horses. Um, use a grazing muzzle to reduce pasture intake We've actually, I've actually just tried out a grazing muzzle called a Harmony muzzle, so H-A-R-M-A-N-Y, um, and they're so much better than the horrible black. Like, I, I can't muzzle my horses with those best friend muzzles because I hate them with a passion. They're horrible. They're so... Can you imagine having a... <laughs> it'd be horrible having your nostrils all covered in and uh, in, our, in our summers, because our summers are so hot, I just can't put them on our horses because they're too hot. But these Harmony muzzles, are, um, they're, made, they're partly Kevlar, so they're, I've got a horse that is an absolute destroyer and he has tried to destroy this thing and he hasn't. Um, so if it survives Poet, it will literally survive anything. 
because um, I'd hear like these bashing noises going, oh God, what's he doing to it now? And you'd look out and you'd just be banging it against the gate trying to get it off, rubbing it on the cement trough trying to get it off. And it survived. It's all completely intact. So they are really tough um, and they're, they're much more open than the, the traditional black muzzles. So they, they're quite okay to have them on when it's, when it's hot. And I was happy to have them on over summer last year. Um, it's important to feed a balanced diet to these guys, so even though you're restricting their feed intake generally, you really need to make sure that you're still giving them good vitamin and mineral support because that's important to help them. If they have got damaged feet, it's important to help their feet um, repair and just to keep them in, in general good health. Um, and then if you need a feed, so if you've had a horse that's had laminitis and then now it's back in work, um, and you need to actually feed it a feed, make sure you feed a non-grain feed um, and make sure it's a proper non-grain feed, not ones that say they're non-grain in the big print and then tell you that they're made of pollard and bran in the small print. Um, so there's only three non-grain feeds in Australia, like true non-grain feeds and the Easy Sport is one of them. A bunch of people use it for horses that have been laminitic um, or are laminitic and, and they, they do seem to do very well on it. So your suitable forages, um, lucerne is almost always less than 10% non-structural carbohydrate. So it's really good um, from that perspective. The problem with lucerne is that often these things that have got laminitis are fat and you can't feed them just lucerne because then they'll just get even fatter. Um, so you can use it partly, but you can't use it as the whole amount of forage. If you can get lucerne from a farmer that's had lucerne that's been rained on and completely destroyed in the paddock but then actually dried out nicely and baled and it's old and it's lost most of its leaf and it's stalky and stemmy, it's perfect for a laminitic horse that, um, that needs to lose weight. Any subtropical grass hay, um, for example rose grass hay is also generally very safe. Um, I'm really lucky in that my dad's got a whole paddock of rose grass that he cuts and makes into hay, so I've got a ready supply of this stuff. But um, he's one of about three people I've found in New South Wales that makes this type of hay, and I doubt anyone down here would make it because it just doesn't grow in cold climates. Um, cereal hay, so oat and wheat and barley hay can be very high in non-structural carbohydrate and you're really best to avoid them. Um, and hopefully most vets now have stopped, like the traditional diet for a laminitic pony was oat and chaff. You just starve them on oat and chaff, and it's probably the worst thing you could have possibly done to them. But most most vets have stopped recommending that, thankfully now. Um, temperate grasses like rye grass can also be very high in non-structural carbohydrates, so you're best to avoid them as well. Um, I've got this here. Has anyone, anyone seen that on bags of feed? Yep. My warning is beware of the laminitis trust. Do not trust that a feed is actually safe for a laminitic horse just because it's got this. Um, and it's because if you look at their website they will actually certify any feed with less than 40% non-structural carbohydrate. So I could get most of the racing feeds in Australia certified under the Laminitis Trust. Um, and I guarantee they'll cause laminitis in a prone horse. Um, so don't feed a feed that has that just because it has that mark. Um, there is some, so Speedy Beat's got that and it's good. It's generally pretty low in non-structural carbohydrate. Um, but there is other feeds that have got that that should not be fed to laminitic horses because they contain grain. Continue watching more of this video by clicking on the link below to visit our website, learn from the best riders and get the best nutrition advice in Australia and connect with a community of passionate people to improve yourself in the equine world. Just click on the link below and we'll see you soon.